Now that we have a basic understanding of reading comprehension questions, what's the best approach for tackling them? To answer this, it helps to know a little bit about the six most common types of questions. They are main idea, details, structure, inference, outside the box, and tone. Once we have a clear idea of the types of questions the GMAT likes to ask, we can develop a strategy for tackling them. So let's take a closer look at each question type. First, we have main idea questions. Here, you must determine the main message or thesis of the passage. In other words, you must identify the central point the author is trying to make. Let's look at some examples of main idea questions. They include, the primary purpose of the passage is to, in the passage, the author is primarily concerned with doing which of the following, the primary focus of the passage is on which of the following, and which of the following titles best summarizes the contents of the passage. Notice that all of these questions require you to identify what the passage is all about. Now, main idea questions are very popular on the GMAT, so in future lessons we'll examine techniques for determining the main idea of a passage. Another popular question type is the details question. Here, you are asked about specific details that you may not have remembered from the passage. These details include ideas and facts that support the main idea of the passage. Now, in a perfect world, you will remember the details required to answer a details question. However, it's not necessary to memorize every detail in the passage to answer these questions. You need only recognize where the detail occurred so that you can refer to it if necessary. Our strategy later will reflect this. Now, some examples of details questions include, according to the passage, consumers began to develop a preference for VCRs in VHS format because they believed which of the following? According to the passage, Wilson's study was unique in that it... According to the passage, economists tend to view those who invest in technology stocks as... And the passage warns of which of the following consequences of vitamin E deficiencies. Notice that it's common for this question type to begin with the phrase, according to the passage. Okay, next we'll look at structure questions. These are questions that ask you to examine the way in which the passage unfolds. In other words, what method is used in the passage, and what role is performed by certain information. Some examples of structure questions include, one function of the second paragraph is to, which of the following describes the organization of the passage, and the author describes Canada's parliamentary system primarily in order to, these questions all require you to understand how the pieces of the passage fit together. The next question type to examine is the inference question. Unlike details questions where we're looking for information stated in the passage, inference questions ask us to use information from the passage to make logical conclusions. Some examples of inference questions include the following. It can be inferred from the passage that which of the following is a true statement about pleiotropic hormones. The passage implies that which of the following is a possible consequence of Italy's antitrust laws, and which of the following can be inferred about France's role in the cheese shortage of 2007. As you can see, these questions all require us to make logical inferences. Okay, next we'll examine outside-the-box questions. These questions test your ability to determine relationships between ideas presented in the passage and ideas outside the realm of the passage. For example, you may be asked to identify a hypothetical situation that is comparable to a situation described in the passage. Or you may be asked to find an example similar to an example in the passage. Or perhaps take ideas from the passage and apply them to a different situation. Some examples of outside-the-box questions include the following. The author of the passage would be most likely to agree with which of the following statements about Vietnam's immigration policy the relationship between fire ants and fig trees is most similar to which of the following, and the author of the passage would be most likely to make which of the following recommendations to the National Cricket Commission. Finally, we have tone questions. These are questions that require you to determine how the author feels about something mentioned in the passage. Some examples of tone questions include, the author's attitude towards the British monarchy is best described as, and which of the following most accurately describes the author's opinion of Pickford's theory. 
For tone questions, it is unlikely that the author will explicitly state his or her feelings in the passage. Instead, you must read between the lines to determine this. Okay, so these are the six most common question types on the GMAT. As you can see, most of the reading comprehension questions that you will encounter do not require you to memorize information. Instead, the questions require you to understand the ideas in the passage and follow the author's line of reasoning. In other words, most reading comprehension questions are big picture questions that require you to glean only the most important information from the passage. So given what we know about the types of reading comprehension questions to expect, we can develop a strategy that maximizes our success with them. We'll do this in the next lesson.